My name is Matthias. I'm a photojournalist. I've been shooting for 29 years. But before I became a, a, a photojournalist, I was a fashion and commercial photographer. I was born in Singapore. Uh, I left Singapore in my early 20s. I worked in the UK. Uh, and then I ended up staying in Australia. I've always um, loved humanity. So because of that, yeah, deep down inside, yeah, it's always inside me that I wanted to do uh, humanitarian work in terms of photography-wise. Doing fashion and commercial, I I've, I've found that there was no soul in it. I mean, I got nothing against it. I enjoyed it, but uh, it's just that the calling was not there for me. I wanted to do more, more intense work. So how I did it, I during my uh, commercial and, and fashion work, I started doing personal projects. My first project was in China, and then and that's when it is. Ever since it just started rolling, so I was doing for newspapers, magazines, uh, working a lot for non-government organizations. I was I was in Iraq as well in 2003. Um, I was in Afghanistan. I was in Pakistan during the September 11. So when September 11 happened, um, many of the many photographers and journalists went to New York. Uh, I chose not to go to New York. I chose to go to Pakistan instead because um, one week after the incident, I know every, every, I won't get access, I won't get good photos because it's, it was heavily covered by photographers who were already in New York. So instead, I went to, uh, to Pakistan and worked my way to go into Afghanistan. I've always wanted to do this sort of work, even before I started doing actual jobs. That's why I really worked hard on it. I, um, I knock a lot of doors. Um, you know, I, I, I see 10 people, I get knocked back. You know, nine people knock me back, you know. But um, a lot of people will be discouraged. But I took that as a, I took that as a challenge. I, I suppose it's, it's because of my, um, my drive and, 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 and passion is what I wanted to do. This is what I believe. It's not that I chose to, to be in conflict areas. It's just that because I... I I get assignments uh, to cover conflict areas. So again, many people, or rather many photographers, I believe that would like to cover conflict areas here. Yeah. But not many photographers can cover conflict areas because by looking at, at the devastation, that would, would throw someone off. When I say throw someone off, and they might, they, they're not able to take a photo, they, they feel emotion, they get emotional. It's, it's not easy, yeah. Editors that hire photographers to, to go to conflict areas, usually uh, they know that they can rely on a photographer. They know that the photographer will come out or come back with images. So again, so it's, it's not, not just that anybody just put up their hand and say, look, I'll be there. I, I become adept to it. Yeah. I'm quite used to it um, because I've been doing it for years. So I'm quite immune to, to seeing such things. Uh, but the, the biggest thing is that um, when I cover such things, I fear no fear. And that, that's my biggest fear. I got to keep reminding myself. You are in a, you are in a conflict zone, and you, know, you got to be careful. And sometimes um, I find that the photo is worth taking. At times, I find that it's not worth losing my life. Since 2011, the tsunami, earthquake tsunami, I, uh, I went in after three days. And ever since, I've been covering uh, this, this project. I'm going to do a book. My book will be out next year. So I'm, I'm going to show the devastation, the aftermath, uh, the recovery. Uh, people are slowly coming back to life, you know, um, lifestyle, uh, obviously Fukushima. I, I've been back eight times, shooting uh, the daily life, day-to-day -day life. It's getting harder and harder to shoot. When I say harder to shoot, because um, life are coming very, people are getting very slow out there. There are not much things happening. So to capture a good image 
to capture them as the way they are, to me, is a challenge. Especially in Fukushima. Uh, a lot of places are now um, are ghost towns. Nobody lives there anymore because of the uh, radiation level. Even if radiation level has gone down, people are still afraid to go back. So the book, ultimately, about Japan is to show my, my audience um, what's happening through my images. Because a lot of people always think Japan is OK now, they're progressing. They are, but slowly. Uh, Fukushima is not going is, is to be over within a year or two. It's going to be a long term. For them now, they, they don't know about their future, what's going to happen in their future.